Shalom, shalom, Barak Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom to the 12 tribes of Yashara, to the dispersion that is scattered across the four corners. Shalom, shalom to the older brother Yehuda, the stick of Yehuda, and shalom, shalom to the younger brother, Aphraim, the stick of Aphraim, and shalom, shalom to the strange, to the strangers and the sojourners who sojourn amongst us, who are no longer of the nations, but have now engrafted into the house of Yahshua through the shed dam of Yahusha HaMashiach, and are no longer considered uh, the nation, but now considered as the native born, for it is written that there is one Torah, both for the native born and for the stranger that sojourns among you. Rock Yahuwah, Rock Yahuwah. I pray all is well, beloved ones. I pray uh, the favor and the blessings upon you, the, the favor and blessings of Yahuwah upon you all this day. And uh, yeah, I believe yeah, the, uh, I'm just coming here again. Uh, to speak on a, a subject that I believe Yahuwah has placed on my heart again. Uh, just different things that I believe he's been placing on my heart, different studies and lessons to just put out there to help people again in their walks, um, in, their, in, in, in their walks and, in, and to just help to tear down standing stone, to be just used as a vessel, to help tear down standing stones, to build up his body. And just to encourage, to to encourage his people, and to speak against falsehood. You know, we are to expose the the, the 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 works of darkness, and we are to tear down standing stones through the truth, through his truth. You know, it is the truth that will make one free. And so, um, I'm coming here to speak on a subject that we all know, we all know, and just. Um, to bring light on darkness, to bring light on falsehood, and to just speak, to proclaim his truth, to proclaim, to proclaim freedom in Messiah, to proclaim, to proclaim freedom in Mashiach, because there is only freedom in Messiah, there is only freedom in Yahusha, the name that is above every name, the one name that is above every name, Yahusha HaMashiach. And so, um, just to kind of give a little backstory, and this is not really concerning nothing that happened to me, but more to my, to a beloved brother. You know, uh, there's a beloved brother in the truth. Uh, when he first came into the walk, he, there was this assembly that he joined, that he stumbled across and ended up joining. And long story short, one of the things that they were proclaiming in this assembly, it was the circumcision of the flesh, you know. They pretty much essentially were proclaiming that if you come to Messiah, that you must be circumcised in your flesh. If you are a grown adult, that you have to be circumcised in your flesh. Um, in another in another instance, uh, the same beloved, the same beloved brother, uh, he also stumbled upon a Hebrew, a Hebrew Israelite, at his job, at his job. And he noticed he he noticed that Hebrew proclaiming genealogy. You know, it, it, within the house of Yashara, the so-called house of Yashara, genealogy is a big thing. It's a it is a big thing that people proclaim and preach and boast about. And within genealogy too, within their genealogy, <laughs> um, within their genealogy. Um, give me one second. All right, within their genealogy, within their gene, they boast in their flesh, they boast in their flesh, they boast in their flesh. You know, it is very common amongst the Hebrew, the black Hebrew Israelites, the, and many so-called people who are, who are of the seed, you know, of the true seed. It may be true that you are of the seed, but within that, within the understanding, people when people come to the knowledge of the, that they are of the true seed, 
this brings in about a pride in many folks. It brings in a pride, it brings in a lot of a boastful attitude, it brings in entitlement that, some, that somehow, because you are of the seed, that somehow you are worthy, that somehow you are worthy and that somehow that this, that this is enough, you know, that somehow this is enough. And, um, Going back to the story, the brother, he stumbled across this one, this Hebrew at his job. And this same Hebrew, he was proclaiming a circumcision of the flesh. He was proclaiming genealogy and he was proclaiming the circumcision of the flesh that it, might, that it, that it, that it is needed for salvation. And my beloved brother, standing up for truth, was trying to uh, speak truth to this man, to this individual, to this Hebrew. And this Hebrew was not receiving it. He was not receiving it. He more he moreover accused my brother of uh, uh, as being used by Satan to tear the seed because this individual, this Hebrew, was proclaiming to another individual in the job. Uh, he he was proclaiming to, uh, to another individual in my brother's job, and my brother overheard the conversation and he stepped in to speak truth to this man so as to cause. This to as to cause the Hebrew to stop speaking truth to this man, and so this Hebrew would then accuse my brother uh, that he was a vessel used of Satan, you know, and that's on his head, you know, that he that that those words will come back will come back upon him on that on that man, you know, it is your who fights for us, and he, my brother just left it at that, but my brother was just standing up for truth, you know. Because in, in, this, in these are just instances that 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 happen around me, I guess you could say. But we know we know that it's it's, it's common. It's a common doctrine of teaching amongst the house of Yashura, the so-called house of Yashura, that you must be circumcised in your flesh. If you are, if you come into the truth, you must be circumcised in your flesh as an adult. And this is this is not true. This is this is not true. You know, this is not true. If you, in the renewed covenant, in the renewal of the covenant, if you come into Mashiach, you do not have to be circumcised in your flesh. You do not have to be circumcised in your flesh as an adult. As a grown man, you do not have to be circumcised in your flesh, okay? It is not a salvation issue. It is not a need to enter into covenant with the Father. Okay? So I pray this day that if you're a Hebrew, if you're a Hebrew or just anybody coming into the knowledge of the truth and you're having a confusion whether you need to be circumcised or not, I pray that this, this study, this lesson can help uh, lead you more down the path of truth, which is Mashiach, who is freedom. Okay? Rock Yahuwah. Rock Yahuwah. Rock Yahuwah. All right, let us go to Joel. Let us go to Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Joel chapter 2 verse 13 reading verse 13 and tear your heart and not your garments and turn back to Yahuwah for he shows favor and is compassionate patient and of great loving commitment and he shall relent concerning the evil and tear your heart and not your garments circumcise your heart and not your garments circumcise your heart and not your garments and turn back to Yahuwah your Allahim turn back to Yahuwah your Allahim circumcise your heart and turn back to Yahuwah your Allahim okay these are the words of the father circumcise your heart and not your garments and turn back to Yahuwah your Allahim repent Come back to Torah and do righteousness. Do righteousness and live. Circumcise your hearts, not your garments. Circumcise, tear your heart and not your garments and turn back to Yahuwah, your Elohim. 
Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. Starting at verse 1. And it shall be when all these words come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the nations where Yahuwah, your Elohim, drives you, and shall turn back to Yahuwah, your Elohim, and obey his voice according to all that I command you today with all of your heart and with all of your being, you and your children. Then Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you, and he shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Yahuwah your Elohim has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest part under the heavens, from there Yahuwah your Elohim does gather you, and from there he does take you. And your Elohim and Yahuwah your Elohim shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess him, and he shall do good to you and increase you the more more than your fathers. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed. To love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being, so that you might live. The goal of the Torah is life. The goal of the Torah is Yahusha. Yahusha is the way, the truth, and the life. All right, and we see within the promise of the Torah that Yahuwah shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed. Verse 7 And Yahuwah your Elohim shall put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you shall turn back and obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commands which I command you today. Which I command you today. All right, so we see within the Torah, the Torah speaks of Mashiach, speaks of Mashiach so that you might live. Who is life? The Ruach, the Ruach, the spirit is life. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Yahusha is the way, the truth, and the life. Moreoverly, we see within the promise of the Torah that Yahuwah shall circumcise your heart. If you come back to the Torah, if you turn back to the Torah, the goal of the Torah is Mashiach. The goal of the Torah is deliverance. The goal of the Torah is life. The goal of the Torah is the circumcision, not the one made of hands, but the one of Mashiach, the one of the Ruach. The one of the Ruach, the one of the Spirit. The promise of the Torah is to be circumcised in your heart. To be circumcised in your heart, to receive the circumcision of your heart and not the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. The promise of the Torah is Mashiach and his circumcision, the circumcision of the heart. If we turn back to the Torah and within the, and the circumcision of the heart is to what? It is to cause you to love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being in obedience to his righteous Torah so that you might live, so that you might live, all right? The Torah is spiritual, the Torah is spiritual. We must understand that the Torah is spiritual. It has always been spiritual. Yahuwah is spirit, Yahuwah is spirit. Yahuwah is the Torah and, the Torah and thus the Torah has always from the beginning been spiritual. It was it has never been a covenant of flesh. It was never meant to be a covenant of flesh. It is all it has always been meant to be a covenant of spirit. A covenant of spirit, a covenant of life. The flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. Alright? It is the spirit that gives life. Alright? The circumcision of the flesh was merely a shadow. Albeit he did command Abraham, we do see uh, that Yahuwah did command Abraham to receive the circumcision, to receive the circumcision of the flesh, you know, as a man. But in the renewed covenant, in the renewed, co the circumcision of the flesh was a shadow of the renewal of the covenant. 
in which Mashiach came to renew and make the covenant better, okay? And to make the covenant better, all right? To make the covenant better, in which now the only the only circumcision that is needed is not the one of the flesh, but the one of the spirit, the one of the spirit, all right? The, the, the circumcision of the flesh was always a shadow of the true circumcision, that of the heart. So it, 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 in the circumcision has been, in this circumcision of the heart has been from the beginning, has been from the beginning. This is not a, a, a New Testament uh, concept. This is not something that began in the renewed covenant. Albeit it is in the renewed covenant it is the only circumcision that is now needed, but Nevertheless, this circumcision of the heart has been one that has been required from the very beginning. From the time of Adam, even until now, this is the true circumcision that Yahuwah has always desired. From the very beginning, this is was the circumcision that Yahuwah always desired. Even before the time of Abraham, before he gave him the circumcision of the flesh, this was the circumcision of the heart was always the circumcision that he wanted from the beginning. Because it's the heart that he is our heart that he desires. He cares nothing about our flesh. He cares nothing about our wicked flesh. He cares about our heart. He cares about our soul, our inward man. And so it was never meant to be a certain, it was never meant to be a covenant of flesh, but always a covenant of spirit. A covenant of spirit. So it was never, it, it, it was never the Torah. The Torah uh, uh, was never the problem. The Torah, you know, as the Christians say that the Torah was bondage. It was never the Torah. It was never the law that was bondage. It was us. It was us in our wickedness. In our wickedness. In our disobedience. It was our wicked hearts. We rejected the Ruach. We rejected the Spirit. We rejected Torah. We rejected freedom. All right? So it, it, it was never the law that was the problem. The law is spiritual. The law is Yahuwah. But it was always us because why in the words of Paul in Romans chapter 7, the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly sold under sin. I am fleshly sold under sin. Okay? We were the ones that rejected the spirit, the, uh, the, 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 the ancestors, the four, in the words of Stephen, you know, in the words of, bringing up the words of Stephen before he was stoned, he rebuked, he rebuked the Yahweh demon in, 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 in his words. He said, you stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the set apart spirit as your fathers did, you also do. And so likewise, many today, uh, outside of the truth and within the truth, many reject the spirit, many reject the Ruach, many reject the circumcision of Messiah, that of freedom, in lieu of their own doctrines and their own understanding in lieu of boasting in their flesh. They would rather boast in their flesh than to boast in Mashiach. They would rather boast in the bondage of their flesh and the genealogy of their flesh, which profits nothing, than to boast in the freedom that we have in Messiah because only in Messiah we have freedom. Only in Messiah are we free from the flesh, from the bondage of the flesh, and we are given the power to walk in freedom, to walk in truth, to walk in Torah. And so, uh, 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 this scripture, this this ver this this the words of, St of Stefano Stephen before he was stoned applies to many of us today. You stiff neck of you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Kadush Ruach, the set-apart spirit, as your fathers did. You also do. All right? You also do. Again, the Torah was never the problem. The Torah was never the problem. It was our wicked hearts. All sin, all sin and unrighteousness and abominations proceed from our hearts. All right? The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our hearts were the, were the problem, not the Torah. The Torah was not bondage. The Torah is freedom, all right? The Torah is freedom. It's our hearts. All sin proceeds from the heart. 
This is what is that Yahuwah has to deal with our hearts. Because this is why he has to deal with our hearts first. This is why it reads in the psalm. In, in the psalm this is why Daoud writes in Psalms 51. He says, create in me a clean heart, O Elohim. 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 It is Yahuwah who creates in us a clean heart. It is Yahuwah who circumcises our wicked hearts. It is Yahuwah who writes his Torah, not upon the tablets of stone on Mount Sinai, but upon the tablets of our fleshly hearts. And he, in a renewed covenant, through the Ruach, and he gives us the power to walk in the Torah, to walk in freedom. All right, it is not our, it is not, we, it, the Torah is not the problem. We are the problem. Our hearts are the problem, okay? Our hearts are the problem. And so it's only in Mashiach that one is freed from the bondage of the wicked flesh. And one is freed from the bondage of our, of our sinful nature. It is only through the freedom who the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Okay? Rock Yahuwah. Rock Yahuwah. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 2. And we're going to read 24 through 29. Romans chapter 2, verses 24 through 29. Romans chapter 2, verses 24 through 29. We're starting at verse 24. For the name of Elohim is blasphemed among the nations because of you, as it has been written. For the, for the name of Elohim is blasphemed among the nations because of you, as it has been written. As it has been written, because of many people boasting in their genealogy, boasting in their flesh, boasting in falsehood, the name of Yahuwah is blasphemed among the nations because of us. Because of, of, of those who proclaim falsehood, boasting in their flesh, boasting in their unrighteousness, boasting in their sinful nature. If you boast in the flesh, you boast in your genealogy, you are boasting in bondage. You are the name of Yahuwah is blasphemed among the nations because of you. All right. For circumcision, indeed prophets, if you practice the Torah. But if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. For circumcision, prophets, if you practice the Torah, all right? Who is he speaking to? The Yahudim in Rome. He is speaking to the Yahudim in Rome. All right, these were Yahudim who were bred up in the Torah, who were bred up in the Torah and what? Circumcised on the eighth day. Now, albeit, we no longer, we no longer need, as adults, need a circumcision in our flesh. But as it applies to our eight day year old sons and children, our eight day year old sons, this still is an eternal decree. We still, we still do this. We still circumcise our sons. All right. But you're only eight days once in your life. You're only eight days you're old once in your life. If you are grown up, if you're grown up, you know, uh, this part, this portion of the Torah no longer applies to you. But if you are one who was born under Torah, we still circumcise our eight day year old sons. For So here he is speaking to those who were circumcised on the eighth day. For circumcision indeed profits if you practice the Torah. If you receive the circumcision on the eighth day, if you were one born under Torah and circumcised on the eighth day, indeed it profits. Why? Because this is Torah. This is righteousness. We still apply, we still do this. We still circumcise our eight day year old sons. Our eight day year old sons. And it only profits if you practice the Torah. If you practice the Torah, if you do righteousness. This is the point. This is the point. If you if you do righteousness. But if you are a transgressor of Torah, Yahudim, circumcised on the eighth day. If you are a transgressor of the Torah. Your circumcision, your circumcision in your flesh has become uncircumcision. 
In other words, it has be it is meant it has become it is it is for nothing. All right, it, it is as if you had never been circumcised. You might as well would have never been circumcised in your flesh, because if you are a transgressor of Torah, what does it profit? Nothing. It only profits your genealogy. Only profits if you are a doer of righteousness and if you have been born of the Spirit. All right, that's it. But even then, you don't boast. Even in that, you don't boast in your flesh. You don't boast in your flesh. You don't boast in this. We boast in Mashiach. We boast in the in the Spirit. Our boast is in Yahuwah and His righteousness that covers us. All right. But circumcision. If you were circumcised in your flesh on the eighth day, on the eighth day as a child, it, it profits you because you are a doer of righteousness. All right. You are a doer of righteousness. You obey His Torah. But if you transgress his Torah, if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Meaning, uh, your circumcision, your circumcision, um, what's it called? It, 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 your circumcision, your flesh means nothing. It would have been, it, it, how do I word it? Your circumcision, is it means nothing. If you do not guard the Torah, all right, it is that you might as well would have never been circumcised, all right? It means nothing. It profits nothing. Okay, let's continue. 26. So, so if an uncircumcised one watches over the righteousness of the Torah, shall not his uncircumcision be reckoned as circumcision? He's asking a question. Yes, all right? If one who is circumcised in your flesh and you transgress toward your circumcision is reckoned as uncircumcision. But let's say, but if one who is uncircumcised, one who is a grown man who has not been circumcised in his flesh, but if he watches over the Torah and does righteousness, shall not his uncircumcision, his uncircumcision in his flesh, shall it not be reckoned as circumcision? Shall it not be reckoned as circumcision? How? Through the circumcision of the heart. Yes, the question is yes, and it is through the circumcision of the heart. All right? If one who is circumcised in your flesh on the eighth day, and you do lawlessness, it is reckoned as uncircumcision. But if you are a grown man uh, coming into the truth, and you do righteousness, you repent and do righteousness, your uncircumcision in your flesh is now reckoned as circumcision. You because you bear the circumcision of the heart, as we're going to read below. All right. And the uncircumcised by nature, the nations, Afraim, the nations, and the uncircumcised by nature who perfects the Torah shall judge you. Who with notwithstanding letter and circumcision circumcision are a transgressor of Torah. It is not the hearers of the Torah that are declared righteous, but it is the doers of the Torah that are declared righteous. And just because you are circumcised in your flesh means nothing if you do not guard the Torah in spirit and in truth. And if one who is uncircumcised by nature, who has the true circumcision, Guarding the Torah in spirit and in truth, he will be the one to judge you. He's the one justified. So you don't have to be one born of uh, uh, born into the in, in, of the of the physical seed. But if you are one who does righteousness, if you if you are of the nations and you do righteousness, and you do righteousness, although you are circum uncircumcised in your flesh. Your uncircumcision will be reckoned as circumcision because of the doing of righteousness, because of the spirit. If you guard, his, as we read in the Torah, if you guard his commandments and turn back to him, he shall circumcise uh, your heart and the seed of your children. All right. He will circumcise your heart and the seed of your children if you do righteousness. So whether you're a circumcised or not, it is all about the doing of righteousness it is all about walking in the spirit, all right? Uh, it is about the doing of righteousness and walking in the spirit. 28, and he, brings, and he brings it in and gives us the true understanding. For he is not a Yahudi who is so outwardly, 
carnally, fleshly, physically. A true Yehudi is not one outwardly. Neither is circumcision that, it, that which is outward in the flesh. All right. True circumcision is not that which is outwardly in the flesh. But a Yehudi is he who is so inwardly. And the circumcision is that of the heart and spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from man, but from Allah, him, a true Yahudim, true, his true covenant people are those circumcised of the heart, who are true Yahudim, inwardly, born again, not of flesh, not of blood, nor of the desire of man, but of Allah, him. Of Elohim and the circumcision which we bear is not the one of the flesh, but the circumcision of the heart. Now, if you are circumcised on the eighth day, it only profits if you guard the Torah. That's it. If you are circumcised on the eighth day, on the eighth day, what's it called? Um, it only profits you if you walk in the spirit and you guard his Torah in spirit and in truth. But if you are a transgressor of Torah, your circumcision, your circumcision in your flesh no longer means anything. All right. It, it means it has no profit. It means nothing. It only means the only thing that matters is the guarding of his commandments in spirit and in truth. That's the only thing that matters is to walk in the spirit. Because by your keeping of the Torah, you show that you are his covenant people because the circumcision the circumcision of the flesh was merely an outward representation of what it means to be in covenant with Yahuwah. The covenant, the barit, the split was not, it was on your pen in the, for a man, the, the circumcision of the heart, the circumcision of the flesh on the penis of the man was merely a, an outward and a physical outward representation of what must be in us. And that makes sense. It was merely something for us to learn from that we must be circumcised in our heart. And that is through the circumcision of the heart that we show by our fruit that we are his covenant people in the doing of righteousness. All right. His covenant people show by their fruit that they are his covenant people and that they bear the true sign of the covenant, which is not of the flesh outwardly, but inwardly. Inwardly in the heart via the spirit. All right. Via the spirit. Romans chapter three. Romans chapter three, verses 20 through 31. Romans chapter three, verses 20 through 31. Starting at verse 20. Therefore, by works of Torah, no flesh shall be declared right before him. For by the Torah is the knowledge of sin. Therefore, by the works of animal sacrifice. No flesh shall be declared right before him. But now apart from the Torah, apart from the Torah of animal sacrifice, a righteousness of Elohim has been revealed, being witnessed by the Torah and the prophets. And the righteousness of Elohim is through belief in Yahushua Messiah to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. All right. The righteousness of Elohim is through belief. To be being declared righteous is only through belief in the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach. Not the works of, not your vain human efforts in bringing a, an animal to sacrifice him on the altar for the atonement of sin. No, no flesh shall be justified. No flesh shall be justified by the works of animal sacrifice. But it's only through belief that one is declared righteous. The righteousness of Elohim is through belief in Yahushua Messiah. 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the esteem of Elohim. For all have sinned and fall short of the esteem of Elohim. Being declared right without pain. Being declared right, being declared righteous, being declared right from your wrongs, because it's only through the shedding of blood, not the blood of animals, but through the shed blood of Yahusha HaMashiach. Being declared right without pain, by his favor, through the redemption, through the redemption which, which is in Messiah Yahusha, whom Elohim set forth as an atonement through belief in his blood. To demonstrate, the, to demonstrate his righteousness. There's only atonement 
only through the shed dam of Yahusha HaMashiach to demonstrate his righteousness because in his tolerance, Elohim passed over the sins that had taken place before to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness and that he is righteous and declares righteous the one who has belief in Yahusha, the one who has turned from their sins, who has come back to the Torah by belief because to believe in Yahusha is to turn from your sins. To confess Yahusha is to turn from your sins and to do righteousness. All right, to do righteousness and to put your trust and your belief in the offering, in the shed blood of Yahusha Hamashiach for the forgiveness of your sins. And there is only righteousness in that. The you and belief in Yahusha Hamashiach. All right. 27. Where then is the boasting? It is shut out by what Torah of works? No, but by the Torah of, by, of belief. For we reckon that a man is declared right by belief without works of Torah. A man is declared righteous by belief in the offering of Yahusha without works of the Torah of animal sacrifice. The blood of animals was never able to take away our sins. They merely covered our sins. But it is the offering of Yahusha, the shed, the precious blood of Yahusha HaMashiach, which is able to take away the sins of the world. So a man is only declared right by belief in Yahusha, not by the works of animal sacrifice. Or is he that, or is he the Elohim of the Yahudim only and not also the nations? Yes, of the nations also. Yes, he is the Elohim of both the Yahudim and Aphraim, who is scattered to the four corners of the nations, all right? And to all the nations who would engraft. He is the Elohim of all. He is the Elohim of all flesh, all right? Verse 30. Since it is one Elohim who shall declare right the circumcised by belief and the uncircumcised through belief, all right? So the understanding is that when one repents and comes back to the Torah and puts their trust in the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach and is immersed in his name and receives the spirit, the spirit of adoption, that it is through the spirit that one is reconciled back into covenant and declared righteous through belief in Yahushua, through belief in Yahushua. And so it is through belief in Yahushua that he is declaring righteous, the circumcised by belief and the uncircumcised through belief. So ultimately, whether you're a Yehudi circumcised in your flesh on the eighth day or an uncircumcised of the nations who are as uncircumcised by nature, we all must be declared right through Yahusha. We all must be declared right through his offering because it's through his offering that we are reconciled back into covenant. And by extension, when we are reconciled back into covenant, he then gives us the sign of the covenant, the sign of the everlasting covenant, that of the heart, not of the flesh. His true covenant people are not born of flesh, but his true covenant people are those of the spirit. So again, whether you're a Yehudi or the nation, circumcised or uncircumcised, it means, no it means nothing without Yahusha. It is only through Yahusha that one receives the circumcision of the heart. And you are now considered his people, his covenant people. Do we then nullify the Torah through belief? Let it not be. On the contrary, we establish the Torah. All the Torah is fulfilled in Mashiach. On Mashiach. All right. One is not declared right by the ceremonial law of bringing an animal and sacrificing it. But on the contrary, we are we the, the Torah is fulfilled. The need for blood, the shed blood, the need for an offering, all of it is established and fulfilled in us through Mashiach, through Yahusha, through belief. So on the con we we establish this is this is all belief. This is all through belief. All of it is belief. The weightier matters of the Torah is all belief. Belief in Yahusha Hamashiach. All right. Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter 4 And we're going to read 9 through 13 
Romans chapter 4, 9 through 13. Romans chapter 4, chap verse 9 through 13. Reading verse 9. Is this blessing upon the circumcised only or is also upon the uncircumcised? Is this blessing... Then upon the circle, the, the, the being declared right, this is the black being declared righteous, being the entering into covenant with Yahuwah, being declared righteous. Is this blessing then upon the circumcised only, or is it upon the uncircumcised? For we affirm, belief was reckoned unto Abraham for righteousness. How then was it reckoned? In what state was Abraham reckoned and declared righteous? All right. How then was it reckoned, being in uncircumcision or in uncircumcision? It was not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. So Abraham was not declared righteous while he was circumcised in his flesh. He was declared righteous when he was in his, in, in, when he was in the state of uncircumcision. Go and read Genesis. Um, I believe it was Genesis fifteen. Or 14, that's when that the instance where Yahuwah spoke the promises over Abraham and Abraham believed and it was righteousness for him. And then you skip over a few chapters, Genesis 17, where this is where Yahuwah gave him the, the covenant of circumcision, all right? And that was many years later. But prior to him ever receiving the circumcision of the flesh, he, Yahuwah uh, had already declared him righteous by belief. By belief, he believed in Yahuwah and the promises, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. All right, and this is a shot. This was a shadow of the uncircumcised who walk in the same footsteps as our righteous forefather Abraham. Abraham was a righteous man. He did righteousness. He walked in belief, and he did righteousness. And because of this belief, he was declared righteous. While he was uncircumcised. And this was a shadow. Alright. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision. A seal of the righteousness of the belief. While in uncircumcision. What is the seal of the right? What is the seal of the righteousness of the belief? The Ruach. The spirit of adoption. Your Abraham received the seal of redemption, the circumcision of the heart, the being declared right, being declared righteous while in uncircumcision. For him to be the father of all those believing through uncircumcision, did not Yahuwah speak over him that in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in you. All right, he is the father of all those believing through uncircumcision for righteousness to be reckoned unto them also. So being declared right, being declared righteous is now available to the nations if they put their trust in the offering of Yahushua HaMashiach. And if they come to Yahushua, they come to Messiah, they no longer have to be uh, uh, circumcised in their flesh as a grown man. Because they, through the offering of Yahushua, you receive the circumcision that is required. The only circumcision that of the heart in a renewed covenant. In a renewed covenant via the spirit. Via the spirit. Twelve. And the father of circumcision to those who are not only. And the father of circumcision to those who are not only. Who are not who not only are of the circumcision. Let me read that again, my bad. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the belief which our, which our father Abraham had in uncircumcision. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the Torah, but it was a righteousness of belief. It was not through the ceremonial law, but it was through a right. It was uh, it was it was always meant to be through the righteousness of belief and the offering that was to come. 
All right. Both the circumcision, both the circumcision of the flesh and the offerings of the animals were a shadow of Yahusha, were a shadow of what was to come. All right. And so the promises are only obtained. They're not obtained through the ceremonial law, but they're only obtained uh, through belief in Yahusha. It is only in Yahusha through belief in him that one is declared righteous, that one is reconciled back into covenant. It's the only way. And he can reconcile both the circumcised and the uncircumcised all through belief. And Abraham was a shadow. Abraham was a shadow of being a father to both the, the father of all who walk in his same footsteps, who do righteousness, being the father of both the circumcised, be of the circumcised, being the clear right through belief, and the uncircumcised, being the clear right through belief as well. All right, Abraham was declared righteous in uncircumcision, and so even so, and even likewise, if you are a grown man, you too can be declared right through belief in Yahusha while in circumcision. And if you are declared right, there is no longer a need for you to to uh to be circumcised in your flesh. All right, there is no need. The only circumcision that you need is that of the heart in a renewed covenant. All right. Rock your wood. Oh, wait. Rock your wood. All right. Galatians 6 15. Galatians chapter 6 15. And this whole book of Galatians, it might be for another video, you're willing, but uh, this whole book of Galatians is all about this. It's all about the circumcision of the flesh. All right. This is one of the Christians' number one book to go to to talk against the law. Not understanding what they are saying, but the context of Galatians from chapter one all the way into six, um, the all the chapter it's all about circumcision. All right, you need to have that. It's all about the circumcision of the flesh, but this video is not about that. All right, we're just gonna read these verses on circumcision today. Um, Galatians chapter six, verse fifteen. Galatians chapter six, verse fifteen. For in Messiah Yahusha, for in Mashiach Yahusha, for in the Spirit, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any strength, but a renewed creature. For in Messiah Yahusha, in the Ruach, Yahusha is Spirit, for in Messiah Yahusha, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any strength. Your flesh. If you are uncircumcised in your flesh, or if you are circumcised in your flesh, whether you're circumcised or not in your flesh, the flesh has no strength. But what does have strength, what does he say? But a renewed creature. A renewed creature created according to what? A renewed creature created in accordance with the spirit. When you're born again, you are a renewed creature. You are a renewed man or woman in Messiah through the spirit. But it is only through this that you have the strength to walk in the spirit, to do righteousness. Neither circumcision or uncircumcision in your flesh has any strength. Why? Because the flesh uh, is bondage. The flesh does not have the strength nor the power to guard Torah. But only a renewed creature created in Messiah, created in the spirit, created in the spirit. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we're going to read 17 through 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we're going to read 17 through 19. Reading verse 17. As only as Elohim has distributed to each one, as the master has called each one, let him walk. And so I order in all the assemblies. Was anyone, was anyone called while circumcised in your flesh? While, was anyone called while, uh, while uncircumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. I'm going to read this verse again. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. 
Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Why? Because the circumcision is not, is nothing. It has no power. It has no strength. And the uncircumcision is nothing. The, un with the circumcision is not and the uncircumcision is not. Why? Because it's your flesh. It, the, the circumcision or uncircumcision is nothing because it has no strength. It has no power. Why? Because it's in your flesh. But what does matter? But the guarding of the commands of Elohim does matter. All right. So we read in Galatians. We read in Galatians chapter six that uh, 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 that, that circumcision or uncircumcision has any strength. We see here in 1 Corinthians that circumcision and uncircumcision is nothing. Why? Because it has no strength. But what matters is a renewed creature created in the spirit, born again of the spirit, uh, having the Torah written upon your heart, having the Torah written upon your heart. And now you have the power to walk in spirit and in truth, to guard the Torah, to guard the commandments of Elohim. This is what matters. The doing of righteousness. If you come back to the Torah and you do righteousness, all right? If you do righteousness, if you are uncircumcised, your uncircumcision will be declared as circumcision because you bear the circumcision of the heart, all right? And if you are circumcised in your flesh, it only profits if you obey his righteous Torah in spirit and in truth, all right? But outside of that, if you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it means nothing and it has no power or strength. Uh, 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 uh. It has no power and strength because it's in your flesh. If that makes sense, it's in your flesh. It's, in, it's given in your flesh. Neither has strength. Circumcised or uncircumcised in your flesh has no power because it's given in the flesh. But what does have power is a renewed creature created in Messiah through the spirit. And now you have the power to guard his commandments in spirit and in truth. This is all the only thing that matters. That you do righteousness and you walk in the spirit. That you walk in righteousness and you guard his Torah in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to read 11 through 14. Colossians chapter 2, 11 through 14. Starting at verse 11. In him, in him, in Mashiach, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. So, you, so we see here. The circumcision of the of the flesh was also a shadow of dying to the flesh, to the flesh. It rep when when one was circumcised in his penis and the flesh was removed. This was a shadow of one putting off the flesh, putting off the body of death, putting off the flesh and dying and being renewed, being renewed as a renewed creature, putting off the body of sins of the flesh. By the circumcision of Mashiach, having been buried with him in immersion, in which you also were raised with him through belief in the working of Elohim who raised him from the dead. And you were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having blotted out that which was written by hand against us, by the dogmas which stood against us, and he and he has taken what's it called? And he has taken it out of the way. Ha oh, give me one second. All right. Let me read fourteen again. Having blotted out that which was written by hand against us, by the dogmas which stood against us. And he has taken it out of the way, having it nailed it to the stake. All right, not the Torah. You know, it's, this is a verse used by Christians to talk about that the Torah, the law has been nailed to the stake, to the cross, as they say. This night is talking about uh, uh, 
that which is written against us. What was written against us? Our list of charges of our crimes and of our sins against the Torah. All our sins are written against us and they are as charges held against us. But all that was nailed to the stake in the offering of Mashiach as his flesh as he was impaled to the stake and nailed to the stake. Ours, he bore our sins and it was as him, our sins being uh, nailed to the stake also. Nailed to the stake and him paying the penalty of death which we deserved and that penalty being paid in him. And this is why it's through, only through belief that one is declared righteous and forgiven of their sins through Yahushua because he bore our sins for us to be declared right. And he was resurrected for us to be declared righteous because in his resurrection, we see, the, we see him overcoming sin, overcoming death, and all who are raised to life through the spirit with him are also declared righteous. And we also have been given the power to overcome sin and do righteousness. And do righteousness. All right. In him, we were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off of the body of the sins of flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. We only die to the flesh. When Yahuwah circumcises our hearts, we die to the flesh. It is we, we die to our flesh and we are made alive as a renewed creature. And he has now given us the strength and power to guard the Torah in spirit and in truth. This is the only thing that matters, that you walk in the spirit, that you do righteousness, and that you no longer walk according to your flesh. So again, circumcision and uncircumcision have no power, have no strength, it is nothing. But what does matter is the guarding of the commands of Elohim as a renewed creature walking in the spirit. This is what shows that you are his cup and the people that you do righteousness. This is by your fruit, one can tell whether this one has a circumcised heart or not, because it is through the heart that all sin proceeds from. And it is from the heart that all righteousness proceeds from. Uh, given that only being if your heart has been circumcised and created according to Yahuwah, created according to his righteousness. So one, again, one can only tell by the fruit of one. Uh, one can tell only if one is circumcised in their heart by their fruit. And by their fruit, you see that this is their covenant people by the doing of righteousness, by obedience, okay? It is only through the circumcision of Messiah that we are in covenant with Yahuwah. It is only through the circumcision of Messiah that we have freedom. So if you are one proclaiming the circumcision of the flesh, you are proclaiming bondage. Because you are proclaiming the flesh. The flesh has no power to guard Torah. The flesh cannot bear the weight of the Torah. The flesh cannot bear the weight of the Torah. The Torah is too much of a burden for the flesh. But in the Ruach, in the Spirit, in Messiah Yahushua, when he writes his Torah upon our heart, and when he circumcises our wicked hearts, when we come back to Torah, when we come back to the doing of righteousness, he writes his Torah upon our hearts, and he gives us the power, and he circumcises our heart, and he gives us the power to walk in the Ruach, and to no longer walk in the sinful desires of our flesh. And by this we show that we love him by the keeping of his commandments in spirit and in truth. By this we know that we are his covenant people by guarding his, his commandments in spirit and in truth. In, do, in the doing of righteousness. Alright? So we don't, we, us in the truth, we proclaim freedom in Mashiach. Because it is only through the Ruach, through the spirit in Messiah Yahushua that we are free from the flesh. That we are free from the bondage of our sinful flesh. It is only in the it is only in the Mashiach that Yahushua sets us free from Egypt. That Yahushua sets us free from Pharaoh, from Hashatan, from our from the slave masses. It is only through Yahuwah, Yahusha, that we are set free from the sinful desires of our flesh. And it is only through Yahusha that we have the power to overcome sin and death through the power of his resurrection through the power of the stake in which we are being saved. It is only in Yahusha HaMashiach through his circumcision. And thus we proclaim Yahusha and him impaled. We proclaim the righteousness of Mashiach. We lift up the stake of Mashiach. We lift up and we boast in Mashiach. We 
boast in the spirit. We boast in the righteousness of Elohim, which is only in Mashiach Yahusha. All right. Anything outside of that is a false good news. If one is coming to you telling you that you have to be circumcised in your flesh in order to enter into covenant, that is a false good news. That is a false teacher. They are not of Yahuwah. They are proclaiming bondage. In the words of Kafir, why do you put a yoke on the neck of the taught ones in which we know our forefathers were able to bear? The yoke of the circumcision of the flesh. Why was it, why was it a yoke? Because it was given in the flesh. Again, you know, again, it was a, a, a given in the flesh. The flesh is the yoke. The flesh is bondage. The flesh cannot guard Torah. It's unable to guard Torah. So we proclaim freedom in Mashiach. We proclaim freedom in the Messiah, Yahusha, in Yahusha alone. There is only redemption in the Ruach. There is only redemption in Yahuwah. There is only redemption in Yahusha HaMashiach through the spirit, through the circumcision of the heart. Anything outside of that is falsehood. Anything outside of that is falsehood. Rock Yahuwah. All right. Let us go to Jasher. Let us go to Jasher. Let us go to Jasher chapter 22. The book of Jasher 22. And we're going to read 40 through 44. Verse 40 through 44. Uh, Jasher 22. And we're going to read 40 through 44. Jasher 22, 40 through 44. Reading verse 40. And Itzkak, the son of Abraham, was growing up in those days. And Abraham, his father, taught him the way of Yahuwah, to know Yahuwah. And Yahuwah was with him. Abraham taught his son the ways of Yahuwah to know him. And Yahuwah was with Itzkak. Yahuwah was, Yahuwah was in Itzkak. The Ruach of Yahuwah was in Itzkak. It was, he was in Isaac. The Ruach, Yahuwah, was in Isaac. Not merely with him, but rather in him also. All right? 41. And when Itzkak, Isaac, was 37 years old, Ishmael, his brother, was going out about with him in the tent. And Ishmael, this is to Yahu boasting y'all's flesh. This precept is for Yahu boasting y'all's flesh, who boast in falsehood, talking about we need to receive a circumcision in the flesh. For Yahu boasts in y'all's genealogy, for Yahu boasts in, in, in falsehood. This is to y'all. And Ishmael boasted of himself. To Iscock saying, I was 13 years old when Yahuwah spoke to me to circumcise us. And I did the word of Yahuwah. We see that he boasting in his circumcision at the age of 13. This is to you sons of rebellion. You sons of the flesh. You sons of the flesh who boast. You sons of rebellion who boast in your flesh. Who boast in your flesh. Who boasts in your circumcision of the flesh, like it, like you have, like it means anything. Who boasts in the, uh, uh, um, in the circumcision of your flesh, in your flesh, in your genealogy, whatever it is. I was thirteen years old when Yahuwah spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of Yahuwah which he spoke to me and to my father. And I gave my soul unto Yahuwah, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Iscock answered Ishmael, saying, Why? <laughs> and Iscock answered Ishmael, saying, Why do you boast to me about this, about a little bit of your flesh which you did take away from your body concerning which Yahuwah commanded you? Why do you boast to me about this? About the little bit of your flesh which you did take from your body concerning Yahuwah. The little bit of your flesh, your flesh, your flesh, which you did take away from your body concerning which Yahuwah commanded you. Why do y'all boast in y'all's flesh? Why do y'all boast in falsehood? Why do you boast in your genealogy? Why do you boast in your flesh? Why do you boast in the wickedness of your flesh? In the bond, if you boast in your flesh, you are boasting in the bondage of the flesh. We boast in the freedom of Messiah in the spirit. Anything outside is false, so we 
boast in the freedom in Yahushua HaMashiach? Why do you boast in your flesh? Why do you boast in your genealogy? Why do you boast in falsehood? Proclaiming falsehood, proclaiming bondage, proclaiming a false good news. You are as Ishmael boasting in your flesh. And Iscock here, a why in the saying the words of Iscock, why do you boast in a little bit of your flesh that was taken off from you? As Yahuwah lives, the Elohim of my father Abraham. If Yahuwah should say unto my father, take now your son and bring up him an offering before me. I will not refrain, but I will joyfully accede to it. So you see, I definitely believe Iscock understood. He understood, he understood and knew because Yahuwah was in him, Yahuwah was with him, and he was also in him. And Iscock understood that it was more, it was more, it was more than just being circumcised in your flesh. You see, I definitely believe that Iscock understood that it was the circumcision of the heart that mattered. It was the only, it's the only circumcision that matters. And Iscock understood this. Iscock understood, that, and Iscock was circumcised on the eighth day. Iscock was circumcised on the eighth day, but he bore the circumcision of the heart because we see in the example of Iscock, he was a righteous man. He was just like his father, Abraham. He was a firstborn according to the spirit. And he was just like his father. And he understood that it was never it was never meant to be uh, about the flesh for us to boast. But it was always about the spirit. It was always, uh, Iscock understood that the true circumcision that matters is that of the heart. That of the heart and not of the flesh. And so he, uh, Iscock understood this. Iscock understood that there's only righteousness in the spirit via Yahuwah. Via his spirit, his set apart spirit dwelling in us. Okay? It is only through the spirit that one is declared right and made free from the flesh. It is only through the circumcision of Messiah and Messiah alone. So why do y'all boast in y'all's flesh? If anyone, in the words of Shaul in Philippians chapter 3, and this was one who was able to boast, he declared that he was circumcised on the eighth day. Of the race of Yashara, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, according to the Torah of Pharisee. But he goes on to say in that same chapter, but what might have been a gain to me, I have counted a loss. I have counted a loss because of Messiah. But what might have been a gain to me, I have counted a loss. It was I counted it all as dumb, as loss, because of Yahusha, because of the Ruach. All right. What's it called? Um, Shaul understood if anyone had a, in any rights to boast in his flesh, uh, if anyone had not a right, but rather if anyone could rather boast in the flesh, Shaul was able to boast in his flesh. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews of the race of Yahshua, according to the Torah of Pharisees. But he even Shaul understanding that it was more than the flesh. It was more than the flesh. He has counted it all as lost in order to gain Messiah. In order to gain Mashiach. All right. He understood that only the only thing that matters is Mashiach. He understood the only thing to understand is the Messiah, Yahushua. The freedom that is in Yahushua, Messiah. Free from the bondage of the flesh. Being declared righteous through belief in Messiah. Receiving the promises of Abraham through the Spirit. Not of the works of Torah of animal sacrifice, but of belief in Yahushua Messiah. All right. And not because of your wicked flesh, because you are of the seed of Abraham. All must be born again. All, no matter whether you're, you're a Yehudi born according to the flesh or you're a full blown Gentile like Cornelius. All must be born according to the spirit. All must be, be born according to the flesh because in the no flesh and blood shall inherit the reign of Elohim. Only those born of the Spirit, only those born of uh, of the Spirit, only those who bear the circumcision of the heart. Okay, only those who bear the circumcision of the heart will enter the reign of Elohim. Because understand this: in the words of the Yahuwah commanded us, and again we still adhere to this. We circumcise our eight-day-year-old children. In their 
flesh, we circumcise, we still have to do this, all right? But Yahuwah also wants us to learn from this, you know, when we circumcise our children, when we circumcise our children in their flesh, we need to understand that we must become as they. Because in the words of the Messiah, when, when the children were coming to him, he said, forbid not the children to come to me. Forbid not the children to come to me because of such is the reign of Elohim. If one does not turn and become as this little child, he shall by no means inherit the reign of Elohim. We must become children like our eight day year old sons in order to bear the sign of the eternal covenant, the circumcision of the heart. Because only through us becoming as babes and us receiving the circumcision of the heart as babes, that is the only way we will inherit the reign of Elohim. Only way. The only outside of that, there's no other way. All right. The flesh is dead. The judgment of the Torah is upon the flesh. We must die upon. We must die to the flesh via the Ruach. If you have not died to the flesh, you are still in the first Adam. But in the second Adam, we are declared righteous. In Yahushua HaMashiach, in the spirit, we are declared righteous. But if you are still in your flesh, you still belong to the devil. Because we are sold under sin. Sold unto Hashatan under the power of sin. Hashatan is sin. We are sold under sin. Sin rules the flesh. And so if you are still, if you have not been born of the spirit, you still belong to Satan. You are still of the first Adam. But in the second Adam, there is overcoming. There is, there is redemption. There is being declared right. There is freedom. That's the only way. This, the only way. This is the true good news that Mashiach Yahusha shed his precious blood for us to be reconciled back into covenant. And so the good news is to repent, turn from your wicked ways, and align yourself with the light of, your, of his Torah. All right, do righteousness, turn from your sins. You must be immersed in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach for the forgiveness of your sins. For the forgiveness of your sins. Because in, in, the, in the physical immersion, you are dying with him. You are being buried with him and you are being resurrected to the newness of life with him by belief. And now the penalty of death, which was pronounced over you through your sins, have now been paid in you. And now by extension also, the penalty of death, the curse of sin and death, which was pronounced over all sin, over all flesh, over all flesh through the sin of Adam and Kua, that penalty of death has now been paid in you through belief in him. All right, and so when you're immersed, that is your outward confession of belief that you have turned from your sins because it is an, imme an immersion of repentance that you have turned from your sins and that you are now beginning to walk in the newness of life because when you come out of that water, it is symbolic of a, a renewal and a rebirth, all right? So you must be immersed, you must repent and be immersed in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for the forgiveness of sins. And you must, you must, you must receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. You must receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. All right, you must receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. You must receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. Because it's through the spirit, when it comes upon you, that you are put to death in the flesh and you are made alive in the Ruach. It is through the spirit that you that the Torah is written upon your hearts. It is through the spirit that you receive the circumcision of your heart. And you are now entered into covenant with Yahuwah. He enters you as a man enters a woman uh, in, in marital rights, giving her marital rights. Yahuwah enters us by giving us marital rights and he becomes one with us. And we now stand in covenant and now what is expected of a bride to our husband, a bride must submit. We being the bride of Elohim, we submit to the Torah of Yahuwah in spirit and in truth. Because uh, our desires for our husband and he does rule over us. So we, we die to our desires. What is our desires? Before we come into marriage with Yahuwah, sin, the flesh the sinful desires of our flesh. But when we come into covenant with Yahuwah and we become his bride, what becomes our desire? The doing of righteousness, because this is what Yahuwah desires. He desires righteousness. He desires obedience and not offering. He desires compassion. He desires the doing of righteousness. 
And if we are his bride, we are going to die to our desires, our sinful desires, and we're going to be made alive. And to do it, we are going to be given the power to do the desire of our husband. All right. Through the circumcision of Mashiach, through the circumcision of the heart, through the circumcision of the spirit. In the last chapter, the last verse, we're going to read the precept we're going to read today is Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read 16 through 21. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Not, yeah, 16 through 21. Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 21. Starting at verse 16. <laughs> and I say, walk in the spirit. And you shall not accomplish the lust of your flesh. Walk in the Ruach. And you shall not fulfill the lustful desires of your flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are opposed to each other. So that you do not do what you desire to do. But if you are led by the spirit. You are not under Torah. If you walk in the spirit. You are not under Torah. You are not under the law. What does it mean by not under the law? You are not under the curses of the law, which is death. The wages of sin is death. So there is no condemnation upon you. There is no law, Torah, that condemns you if you walk in the spirit. So there is no Torah of condemnation. There is no Torah of sin and death. And the works of the flesh are well known, which are these. Adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, murders, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like of which I forewarn you, even as I have said before, that those who practice such as these shall not shall not inherit the reign of Elohim. But the fruit of the Ruach is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. Against such there is no Torah of condemnation. There is no Torah that condemns that behavior. If you walk in the flesh, there is judgment upon you. The judgment of death is upon you. In, in Romans chapter 8, there is no condemnation to those who are in Mashiach Yahusha, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. All right. If you walk in the flesh, there is condemnation upon you. But if you walk in Messiah, if you walk in the spirit, there is no condemnation. There is no Torah that condemns this behavior, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, there is no Torah that condemns that behavior. So there is no Torah against such. There is no law of condemnation. There is no law of death. There is no sentencing of death. If you walk in the spirit. If you walk in Messiah. And those who are of Messiah have impaled the flesh. Oh man. I have my bad, y'all. I said 6, 16 through 21, but we're going to read just 24 uh, through 25. So 16 through 25, all right? And I'm going to start it. I'm going to read the fruits of the Ruach again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no Torah. And those who are of Messiah... Who have, who have impaled the flesh with its passions and the desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So this is the fruit. This is the uh, the fruit of the spirit. This is the fruit of one who is in covenant with Yahuwah. You can tell who are in covenant with Yahuwah by their fruit. In the words of Messiah, by their fruit you shall know them. By what they do, by, the, by, by their fruit you shall know them. And so if one is walking in the flesh, that's the first Adam. These are the sons of the first Adam. These are the sons of Hashatan. But if we, some, we see one walking in the spirit, we see that they bear the sign of the circumcision of the heart. And that the Ruach of Elohim dwell, is upon them and it dwells in them as Yahuwah was with its cock. 
Yahuwah is with us and he is in us. And we are in Messiah and there is no condemnation to those who are in Messiah, Yahusha. Who, if we walk in the spirit, we do righteousness. We do righteousness. And so again, again, if you are, if you come as, if you come in, if you come as one circumcised, you don't have to be circumcised. If you are circumcised, you do not have to become uncircumcised. But the guarding of the commandments does matter. The doing of righteousness, walking in the spirit is the only thing that matters because it is the spirit that gives you the strength. Circumcision, uncircumcision is not and has no strength because it is in your flesh. It matters not whether you're circumcised or not circumcised if you have not the spirit. If you do not have the spirit, it matters, it matters not what status you are, circumcised or uncircumcised. It is all about the spirit. And if you have received the spirit, you do not have to be circumcised in your flesh. You do not have to be circumcised in your flesh. You have been set free from the flesh via the Ruach. And, if the, and you must walk and bear the fruit of the Ruach as we see here. And not bear the fruit of the flesh as we read above. Because judgment is upon those who walk according to the flesh. None who does any of these shall inherit the reign of Elohim, but only the righteous, those who do righteousness, those who walk in the Ruach, only those will inherit the reign. If we become children, if we walk in the circumcision of Messiah, if we walk in the freedom of Torah, we shall be blessed in the doing of the Torah, in the doing of righteousness. <laughs> Rock it wood. And that does conclude this lesson, this study today, beloved ones. Um, don't give ear to every single person. Don't 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 give ear to every spirit, but rather try every spirit. If you're in your beginning stage, if you're in your beginning stages coming into the knowledge of the truth, do not allow them to deceive you. Do not allow them to lie to you, but study to show yourself approved and and and, and, and seek your who in all things. Do not allow them to lead you astray. There is many people proclaiming falsehood, a lot of Hebrew Israelites, a lot of black Hebrew Israelites, a lot of people who are so-called Torah observing, proclaiming falsehood. They proclaim everything but Messiah, Yahusha. They proclaim everything but Yahusha. Because their good news, a lot of people, their good news is that when they come into the knowledge of the truth, that they come into the knowledge that they are of the true seed of Yasharal. This is the good news to them. Mashiach, <laughs> It, they hear the they hear the fact that they uh, that they are the true seed, and they 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 rejoice. Oh, but Mashiach died for our sins too. Oh, that's cool. You know, <laughs> they treat it like that. They 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 boast their flesh over Messiah. They might not say that, but they boast their flesh over Messiah. They boast their flesh over Messiah and to them, to them that they are of the true seed of Yahshua. This is the good news to them. Except. You can tell them that Yahusha shed his blood and suffered for us to be freed from the flesh. And they were like, oh yeah, we know that too, but we still the true people, you know. The foolishness, the foolishness that they speak, the foolishness that they proclaim, the foolishness that, that, that is in them. You know, you are still in your flesh. And if you are still in your flesh, you will not inherit the reign of Elohim. If you are proclaiming this, if you are boasting it, in the words of Iskar, why do you boast in the little bit of your flesh which you have taken off? Which you have taken off, the little bit of flesh that you have taken off. Why do you boast in your flesh? Why do you boast in, why do you boast in your flesh? You know, so I pray that you take heed to this message that Yahuwah spoke to his servant this day. We must walk in the spirit. We must walk in freedom. I proclaim Mashiach, I lift up Yahusha. I proclaim the blood of Messiah. I lift him up. I proclaim Yahusha. I have no righteousness. I, I, I have no righteousness. I have no um I have no righteousness of my own. Outside of Messiah, I am good for nothing but to be cut off and thrown in the fire. 
Only in Messiah and Messiah alone do I have righteousness because it is his righteousness that covers me. It is his righteousness that works in me, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure, to do his will and his desire. Outside of him, I have nothing. This is we must boast in Mashiach and Mashiach alone. And we must walk in the spirit. We must do righteousness. And we must walk in the circumcision of Messiah. In order to live. Alright. Barak Yahuwah. That does conclude this lesson and study beloved ones. Yahuwah Barak you and guard you and show favor to you. And Yahuwah guard you all this day. Shalom Yahusha. Shalom Shalom.